Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Using fiscal policy has its drawbacks. There are several problems that government can run into that can ultimately reduce the effectiveness of spending and tax policy. The first set of problems are delays in the implementation of fiscal policy that are known as time lags. There are three separate types of time lags. The first type of time lag is recognition lag. This is the delay created when government fails to react to economic indicators and address economic problems. If Congress reads economic indicators incorrectly, it can misdiagnose economic problems or fail to recognize them entirely. This means that economic problems persist or worsen until policymakers can recognize that they exist. The second type of time lag is administrative lag. This is the delay created when legislative gridlock slows the implementation of fiscal policy. Policy takes time to pass through the legislative process. It goes through debate and committees and revisions long before it's voted on and passed. In the time it takes to push the appropriate policy through government procedures, economic problems persist and then worsen. This means that by the time it's approved, fiscal policy can be inadequate to solve the problems in the aggregate economy. The third type of time lag is operational lag. This is the delay created when government bureaucracy takes time to plan and execute fiscal policy. Implementing spending and tax policy isn't instantaneous. It takes time to allocate the resources necessary to execute the plans. Government must distribute and support infrastructure needed to implement new programs or cut programs back, and they have to use resources to issue tax refunds and collect new tax revenues. Problems in the economy are not remedied until these operations are completed. The use of fiscal policy is intended to be entirely economic. Unfortunately, fiscal policy use can become hijacked for political gain, leading elected officials to suggest inappropriate fiscal policies. Instead of correcting economic conditions, they actually make them worse by implementing an incorrect fiscal policy simply because it is politically popular. Politically motivated policies are the second problem of fiscal policy use. We get it. Telling voters what they need to hear is harder than telling them what they want to hear. If a politician announces on the campaign trail that he pledges to cut jobs and scale back real GDP production, he'll lose in a landslide. But if the economy is in an inflationary gap, he's actually suggesting the appropriate fiscal policy for the current state of the economy. So to save his political career, he'll suggest a policy that is economically inappropriate, but is politically popular. Suppose that the United States is at full employment. The unemployment rate is at 4%, and prices are stable. The president pushes for a tax reform bill that will reduce income tax rates for all American households and create millions of jobs for American workers. This bill is incredibly popular because every voter loves tax cuts and creating jobs always sounds good. Except the economy is already at full capacity and the economy is already at the natural rate of unemployment. But the president is concerned with his popularity with his base and his approval ratings are in the dumps. If the policy is passed, it could bolster his numbers and help re-elect him. It will, however, also drive the American economy into an inflationary gap. When the tax cuts are passed, American consumers gain additional income and increase their consumption, leading to an increase in aggregate demand. Firms will hire workers to scale their production of real GDP output to meet demand, which drives the unemployment rate below 4%, pushes the economy into a rate of growth that is unsustainable, and initiates a wage price spiral. Unless the policy is reversed, the United States will face excessive inflation, which will decrease real wages and diminish consumer purchasing power. In retrospect, the appropriate policy would have been to do nothing and allow the economy to continue at full employment. The president allowed his political motives to drive his economic policy, and the entire economy was damaged because of it. The third problem in the implementation of fiscal policy is the phenomenon known as crowding out and crowding in. Crowding out is associated with government deficit spending. When a recessionary gap exists, government can use expansionary fiscal policy to close the gap. However, increasing government spending, decreasing personal taxes, or using a combination of both can lead to deficit spending. 
Because the government doesn't have the revenue to fund its new expenditures, it must borrow money. But when the government borrows money to fund expansionary fiscal policy, it borrows large sums, which depletes the banking system of reserves and drives up interest rates. This means loans are more expensive for firms and consumers. Ultimately, firms will reduce the quantity of loans that they take out and reduce their investment spending in order to avoid higher interest rates, causing investment spending to decrease and reducing the effectiveness of the initial expansionary fiscal policy. Crowding in is associated with government surplus spending. When an inflationary gap exists, government can use contractionary fiscal policy to close the gap. However, decreasing government spending, increasing personal taxes, or using a combination of both can lead to surplus spending. Because the government has more revenue than it needs to fund its expenditures, it no longer needs to borrow money. This reduces the demand for loans throughout the banking system and leaves the banks with more reserves, which drives down interest rates. This means loans are less expensive for firms and consumers. Ultimately, firms will increase the quantity of loans that they take out and boost their investment spending in order to take advantage of the lower interest rates, causing investment spending to increase and reducing the effectiveness of the initial contractionary fiscal policy. The fourth problem in the implementation of fiscal policy is the phenomenon known as the net export effect. Both expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy will impact price level. When the aggregate economy experiences inflation or deflation, it not only impacts the price level that consumers pay for goods and services domestically, but it also affects the price level foreign consumers pay for our exported goods and services as well. When a recessionary gap exists, government can use expansionary fiscal policy to close the gap. However, increasing government spending, decreasing personal taxes, or using a combination of both can lead to an increase in aggregate demand, which will cause inflation in the economy. This inflation will cause the price of our exported goods to rise in foreign markets everywhere around the globe. Because our exports are now more expensive compared to other goods, foreign consumers will choose to buy cheaper products from other markets and will consume less of our exported goods and services. This leads our net export balance to move towards a deficit. Ultimately, this reduction in exports compared to imports will cause aggregate demand for domestic products to decrease, which reduces the effectiveness of the initial expansionary fiscal policy. When an inflationary gap exists, government can use contractionary fiscal policy to close the gap. However, Decreasing government spending, increasing personal taxes, or using a combination of both can lead to a decrease in aggregate demand, which will cause deflation in the economy. This deflation will cause the price of our exported goods to fall in foreign markets everywhere around the globe. Because our exports are now less expensive compared to other goods, foreign consumers will choose to consume more of our exported goods and services and buy fewer expensive products from other markets. This leads our net export balance to move towards a surplus. Ultimately, this boost in exports compared to imports will cause aggregate demand for domestic products to increase, which reduces the effectiveness of the initial contractionary fiscal policy. And that's problems with fiscal policy. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my video on the Phillips curve, or you can click here for my macro minute video on crowding out and crowding in. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.